Welcome everyone to the first JT Music podcast of 2023. We've made it. That was a sync clap. Was it? Did we need to do that? Oh uh, well. Hey, well, now we have it. Now we got a Look sync at clap. that. We synced in the podcast. The That's clap. meta, dude. Yeah. Whoa. Um, welcome to the podcast. Uh, we actually had, we obviously had a little bit of a break. I kind of alluded to that that we didn't have a backlog of episodes because we ate into our backlog when the studio was being built. It um, happens. But here we are again. We're back. Back to your regular, regularly scheduled programming. Yeah. Uh, Monday mornings. Um, we actually ourselves just uh, finished our goals meeting. For we the did year. our housekeeping, and we yeah. didn't include you in the housekeeping. So sorry. You know how we love to yep. include you in the housekeeping, but, but we'll, we didn't. Uh, but we can go spark note it. We yeah. just, we just, yeah, had our goals meeting. Yeah. So, it's, um, and if you want to hear more, hear it more in depth, we do have that where we break down our goal meeting really on our Patreon uh, as well. Mm -hmm. I mean. I think it's like a, you, if you donate a dollar, then you can go listen and listen to every. You can see almost everything. Anyways, yeah, uh, I think the the short of it is, it's going to be not too different on your end of things, mm -hmm. uh, and on our end of things, it's just a little little bit more uh, optimizing our content. Yeah, optimizing like our content. Just yeah. kind of focusing on what you guys want to see from us based on what has performed well on JT Music in the past. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It, that's yeah. about it. I think it, it comes down to, because for the last few years, it's largely been make the content we want to make. Like, oh, we've built up this big audience. Mm -hmm. You know, we've hustled. The grind's there. Now let's just kind of enjoy it and make things we want to make. Yeah. And you know, that, that was fun. That was a nice, that was rejuvenating and good in its own sense. But it's come to, come to a time where the platform has changed so much. The users have changed so much where... You know, in or like ultimately our goal, our total overall goal is to do this as long as we can. Yeah. Live this, live and lo live and love this awesome job we have, and so you had to realize, okay, let's uh, step it back and and make content people want to see, our subscribers want to see, but that we also want to make. Yeah. And so that's it's that's that's what it comes down to. It's not a big change at all, honestly, mm -hmm. and it won't look different. No one would ever think like, oh, this this new JT, it's it's not gonna, you're not gonna feel that. It's just gonna be, I think, optimized content. That's yeah. It. It, and and like we kind of talked about this on our Patreon uh, podcast where we go into more detail about it. But like a lot of the stuff that performed in the past, especially at like peak JT music time, which you could argue was probably between 2016 and 2018. Like even the stuff we were covering that was sure Mimi or just popular at the time, like FNAF and stuff, we still had a genuine interest in. So I think it's just essentially kind of re going back to our roots. Yeah. Um, and certainly if we have any you know, offshoot projects like the live action, I'm o it, I, I'm over being over you, or any kind of fun, goofy, more passion projects, we'll still do those too. Those might just show up on the on our second channel on JTTV or something. Or, But yeah, yeah we're essentially just optimizing for you guys, what JT yeah. music viewers want to see. And what um, that may mean, or what that means, uh, if you're not, if it just sounds like fluff, you know, what that means exactly is say, look at Saints Row, or destroy mm -hmm. humans those wouldn't be made yeah. in 2023 those if somehow 2023 was redone or 22 uh, whatever you know like if hindsight with what we're carrying into the next year we wouldn't have made those mm -hmm. uh we probably wouldn't have made obi-wan um yeah and a couple others like movies and tv shows tend also not those, to do yeah. as well um sticking to the really main mainstream triple a releases which historically have done well for us like doom halo uh cod, COD yeah even it, things like crash bandicoot yeah um, we looked back through like the last few years and especially that like st that really strong stretch and mm -hmm. like we were still like doing triple a games all over the place yeah and then these like fun trendy indie things mm -hmm. and it was just like oh but there was no like stretches of a, of a game like you just didn't see a uh, destroy all humans. You didn't see a, uh, you know, Mar Mar Marvel's Avengers game or yeah, a Tony Hawk. You know, like back then we like it. Uh, that's also a thing of the has to do with the nature of gaming. Then was just a lot of bangers were coming out, so we did the bangers over. Like we didn't have to go down the rungs. Mm -hmm. There's but so that's many. To say if there's not a lot of bangers coming out, AAA game wise, then we're not gonna like pick the next best thing. We're just gonna do the next best thing mm -hmm. i guess rather than that if that makes sense so like instead of of doing uh a saints row or well, crash bandicoot rap you know or no sorry not crash uh 
a destroy all humans rep we just we find what's trending we use the tools and the resources what's what's on youtube what do people like to see what do our subscribers like to see mm-hmm. and then and then make that you know yeah and and then on the flip side you know we kind of we're doing saints row and then we realize oh man this might not be good in terms of the game's like traffic and like hype and all that stuff yeah and we should have just called it a loss and stopped it you know mm-hmm. So those are the kind of lessons we're taking in. It's really nothing too big on your end, but that's that that was the crux of the of the meeting and, and a big thing of our goals. You know, we want to hit 4.6 million subscribers as our conservative goal. Mm-hmm. Um, that puts us at about growing 30,000 subs a month. We want to hit, so that will put us at 4.6. We're at 4.2 now, but I the real goal is to hit 5 million this year. Yeah. And so if we do all the if we optimize our content, I feel pretty good about hitting 5 million subs this year. Yeah. Me too. So. And, um, yeah, yeah, I think other, I kind of con like, uh, things from the goal meeting is, uh, kind of like TikTok and, um, the shorts uh, is figuring that out. Yeah. You know, shorts. we're, we look at us, we're old men, millennials, <laughs> uh, and we don't, I don't know. I think, I think part of, I, I, I don't understand TikTok and uh, that's admittedly a huge part of that is that I'm not on TikTok. As yeah. a user, I ha- we have it. We post to it. And it's not any kind of resistance to the new that is the reason why I'm not on it. It's because I know I'll get s- – I, I just know it's a time suck. And that's like a, yeah. that's like an adult time management conscious <laughs> mature choice. Is like I'm not going to – I'm going to cut this thing out of my life um, because my t- because way. time is precious. And at the flip side, it's like, but this is also my job and knowing and understanding things is my job. So it's – I still don't feel – compelled to get into tiktok because i i just know it's a bad idea for me yeah um same but it's also but important so it's it's trying to figure that out but I, also again just yeah that ooh. that's kind of a yeah. goal this year is to figure out how we can incorporate like we've toyed with the idea of doing like a joke like couple second long trash meme song to promote like the song that's coming out like not not just trash but like short and goofy not a lot of effort put into it to promote whatever song we have coming out on youtube but also with that maybe if we can find some sort of tone for tiktoks that we can do a little more consistently kind of supplementally to our yeah. main content on youtube but yeah understanding that tiktok is here to stay at least as far as we can tell so and youtube is prioritizing shorts so yeah like- so Figuring right. out something. What is JT Music's tone or... And then just sh- frankly, what there. what works. Like yeah. what's doing... Th- like these platforms want it to be a tool that we use. And yeah. so it's like, okay, they want, us, they want it to be a tool for us. That's how they're optimizing it. That's how they're rewarding it. So it's like, okay, so how do we... How can we make it work for us where it refers people to our main video or mm-hmm. to our music? And that's really hard when... It's it's let's just for example, Mr. Beast video. I lived in a ball pit for a hundred days. Like it's easy to make a fifteen to thirty second trailer that'll make you then want to go the watch the full video easily. Mm. You know, there's h- hours of content, all sorts of different types of editing, people talking, all this types of stuff. It's just easy to make a short to make you then go watch the main video. Yeah, and for music, what is that? How do you make a trailer for music? You know, that yeah. isn't just the song. I've see I've got an idea specifically for working on a Choo Choo Charles song right now. I've got an idea for one right now where cuz I I sampled I took a train sound, mm-hmm. multiple train sounds and sampled them into the beat. Like this is just an example I'm coming up with on the fly being like a short a short for TikTok or YouTube that's just like I wanted to put <laughs> Picturing it like a Mr. Beast video. I wanted to start my Choo Choo Charles song with a real train sound, so I put it into my beat. Dun, dun, and then show me sampling it into the beat, and that's it. That's yeah. like the stuff like that. Maybe not be as no, obnoxious, that, but, yeah. you know, some stuff like f- that. But, but you ask a good question. How do we do that for music regularly yeah. is the tough part. Because that's a good example specifically for Choo Choo Charles. But, like, trying to figure out a way we can do that weekly um it's or bi-weekly whatever uh, it's interesting to see what everyone else does yeah like i think cam steady hit a pretty good stride but i think it, they might have fallen off with the format of like wrapping top third top two thirds and then video bottom third or like prepare like 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 saying well what if so-and-so made a rap and like like kind of memeing out or pantomizing like studio sessions 
um, Fable likes to do. I made this in my home studio. Shows his home studio. Kind of looks like, like who is this guy? And then like, oh, this guy makes a banger. Is like the kind of the the juxtaposition. Mm. And rock, 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 rock and music. Russell just tried something more close to what you just said. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's just finding that. But it's also it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's a, more the work than you think, and it's it's like even posting a short little TikTok. Yeah, it takes a you know a little bit of a little bit of yeah, yeah <laughs> editing and, it, and stuff. And a lot of that is just to say the time isn't there for us. Like we're already yeah. we're already uh, stretched thin as a two man team. So it's so, it's it's a if and, we can find something that isn't too much extra work. Or if, like, if get the that, formula down. Get the you know, form, yeah. Get the formula down, yeah. Which I think, like, kind of what I just mentioned and what we've kind of had an idea for is some sort of which you already mentioned, like some sort of short little song teasery way to because what we do is like music videos and stuff. So if we can find a way to incorporate that into the shorts, I think people will dig it. Yeah. So yeah gonna figure out but it's exciting to figure that out too it's also exciting to try yeah. new things and see what works you so. were saying on the patreon podcast there's a lot of like confidence with uh this challenge in front of us yeah because I, I know i know we know i know that we have the tools and the skills and the the experience and that we were there yeah i think the the biggest change again was we just like oh we've hit we've hit a maturity arc you know mm -hmm. and then now and that, there's not much of a redemption. Like we're still fine, but like this is kind of the redemption arc. Let's get back to I'm not getting back to like even just being pro relevant. We're just getting back to being like to that prolific growth. Yeah, exactly. is what we want to. The redemption is, I guess. We're at the top of the mountain, and we're not even halfway up. My favorite Doctor Disrespect quote. Oh yeah, you made a whole. Isn't that like a whole? <laughs> I'm kind at of the song? tippity top of the mountain. Yeah, that's why I made the Apex yeah. song. Was I'm at the top of the mountain, and I'm not even halfway up. It's so funny. I love that. Uh, um, that's, that's our, it's largely a breakdown of our goals meeting. Yeah. Uh, come on, kind of not prepared segment, but let's keep it on the theme of new year or, or year, year and looking back or whatever. But what was your, your favorite project from this year? Favorite Broadly, project. Broadly, music video, like live action or like song or like overall thing, like Ooh. whatever it was. Could be a, um, for some reason a TikTok you made really got you. Uh, ah, yeah. favorite project, favorite I mean, MPC was a huge highlight because yeah. that was a uh, just an incredible event. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think one of the, one of my favorite projects was doing Sea of Thieves. That was a yep. lot of fun to do that one. We had our buddy Joey fly out for mm -hmm. it too, um, so that was just a ton of fun to make. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think of other favorite projects. I don't really know. Um, I mean, Solo Her. Let's see. Solo Her, yeah, that was... I mean, what's your um, favorite song you made like, as, a, think, as a listener? Honestly, as a listener, I think probably my favorite song this year was... Uh, hmm, might have been... Uh, scroll back towards the beginning. I think it might have been... Uh, might have been the Elden Ring rap, the Shed No Grace on Me. Yeah. I think it might have been that one, even though I also love Let Me Solo Her and had a f ton of fun doing that. Because uh, that also felt like a quintessential JT project that, like, we kind of, you had the idea to do kind of last minute. It, it wasn't, like, a fully last minute project, but oh, it was, like, yeah. yeah, but it was, like, kind of a little bit of a passion project. Obviously, it was on a very topical meme as well, yeah. but it felt like just coming together, making it for the, like, it, it just felt like a very quintessential JT project, but so did Shed No Grace on Me. Both those songs, I love the lore of of all the uh, From Software games, as you guys know. I love making Dark Souls songs, Bloodborne, this one. So it's already a fun IP to explore, just the Souls universe, um, and it was just a beat that I had had lying around for a long time, too, so th specifically Shed No Grace on Me was probably one of my favorite projects. I just yeah. had a ton of fun writing and stuff. So how about you? Did you have um, a favorite? Uh, I think, like, song, like, tune-wise, I think The Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb, yeah. And I, I think, uh, like, the chorus is... I really like that chorus, which is funny because it was such a last minute thing due to something falling through. Yeah, it um, was. <laughs> and it, it like, I don't, I'm not a Peter Frampton fan, but I do really like two of his, like just two of his big hits. It's like pretty, pretty normy of me. If, if there's, to the, sorry to the Peter Frampton fan base <laughs> out there. Um, <laughs> there's diehard Frampton um, fans. But he had the voice box thing. 
yeah. it's such a fun unique sound and it was like oh shit this is like such a new poppy kind of take on that and that was really cool cool well i'm glad you like that because that kind of goes into a big part of my philosophy for myself in 2023 is i want to get back to making more like fast and loose songs mm -hmm. Um, cause like I've, I've learned a lot of technical skills. I'm still improving and I don't consider myself a full master by any means, but I've definitely come a long way technically. And this year I kind of want to get back to some of that fast and loose yeah. stuff, which with that chorus, it was a pretty fast and loose chorus out of necessity because it was supposed to come out the next day. Um, but it was just fun to like, also I was using that new plugin, which was the voice box tool yeah. and I didn't have a lot of, I didn't know much about it. So when I was playing with it, that it, the sound that I got is a result of not knowing much about it, yeah. which in the past I've come up with a lot of cool so sounds by not knowing what I was doing. Um, so I know it probably sounds like I want to get stupid this year, <laughs> but that is kind of what I want to do. Like, yes, there's a lot of important technical skills that you learn as a producer with music, but the, a lot of that technical stuff can kind of stomp out some of your creativity. Yeah. So, um, I want to have some more projects like that one specifically also with the chord progression of that course, I was just trying to get weird with it. Um, and just try something different, which I got a very different sound out yeah. of it, and it performed well. So it's, there's like a lot of, a lot of healthy creative factors that went into that song that I want to employ for 2023. So yeah, yeah. I think like one of my other top hooks was uh, "Devil of a Time" because I'm bad mm. and you know it. That was a catchy one. I think that one almost yeah. inspired kind of like doing a stage musical like shoot yeah. like a, like a stage musical number dance number whatever you want to call it and then record like it, it's meant for film but like still make it feel like a stage thing yeah i don't know if we'll do that but but i think we will carry that concept to something because it could be fun mm -hmm. but it would and have to hit the right property again optimizing you know the the media and the topic for the channel yeah but you know yeah. also if it is a song that's out in a live action like that it wouldn't take like a main like it would, it would just be an extra video. Yeah. So it, you know, it's it's not too much of a risk in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, what is uh on on the spot favorite uh TV show movie you saw this year? Favorite TV show that we did something for just no, in general. Just as a as a fan. House of the Dragon easily. House of the Dragon was uh was so well done. It's. All that show is doing is setting up the war. It's not even the war. It's not the crux of the action. All yeah. that show is is set up, and it's still super awesome. That is a true testament to how good the writing is. Like, the, it's not even the core of the action, yet you are fully intrigued and hooked. At least I was yeah. for that whole show. I, what an incredible show. Yeah, for me, I um, loved it. I love the sandbox of West... of. Uh, Westeros, Essos, whatever that world is. Yeah. Song of Ice. I mean, it's Ose. more than a Song of Ice and Fire now, so I don't really know what it's... Ose? Ose. Ose. I don't know. I, it, it does have a name. It, it actually, it might be close to that. Like... Um, isn't... I think the world in... Uh, in uh, what's it called? Lord of the Rings? No, the world in uh, the Yellow Dog, Jake and Finn, Adventure Time. I think it's called like Ooh, which is I, funny because it's like... It's, a, it's, just a, it's just a bunch of O's, oh. which is funny because it might be... Because I think the world of Game of Thrones is... is is that I'm not I'm fucking I'm not gonna look it up. I, yeah. But um yeah, I agree. I love that show. Um I did we I haven't gotten to watch Andor, which is really bad for me, a Star Wars fan, I know, but I'll get to it. And but another one I actually did enjoy, and I think it has something to do with binging it, being able to binge it instead of watching it week over week. But I actually really enjoyed Lord of the Rings. Like the back half, the last four episodes last four was really fun to watch back to back to back. Like I was like, one more, one more, one more, one yeah. more. Like it took it takes four to set it up, but it's worth the payoff. And it's funny to see how many people stopped after episode four because it's like that's where the it, stuff happens. It gets a lot better. Yeah. It's a lot of setup. I mean, they have to set up a whole world, new players. You know, yeah, it's whatever. I I have my hot takes about. Well, no, they're not really hot takes. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, the the rings of power destroyed Lord of the Rings for me. No, people who say that are being so over the top. Like. No, this the, I did. I did not really like Rings of Power that much, but I didn't hate it. I just felt like something was missing. And when I found out after the show was made that they didn't have the rights to 
some of the characters and stuff. Like, they didn't have full ownership to all of the d- details from Tolkien's, like, world and which stuff. Which is funny that, like, Which, weird, to me, just says, characters. don't make it. Yeah. Like, just don't make it. Wait till you can get the rights or make something completely new and completely different. I, like, it doesn't make sense to me. If you can't use, like, Gandalf's name or something, like, why are you making this? Um, certainly they were still, cause like I've heard people say, oh, you should watch this show as its own thing. Like it's not part of Lord of the Rings. It's hard and it's to like, do though. How do you do that? After Peter yeah. Jackson's trilogy was so iconic and every, almost everybody unanimously agrees that Peter Jackson and the whole team behind Lord of the Rings, the original trilogy did an impeccable job adapting it Mm -hmm. to the screen from the books so this this show didn't feel like i i I haven't read the silmarillion the whole way through but i've read some of it and i know a lot about the lore and i definitely do have to agree with like the tolkienite hardcores because yes there are people who are hardcore lord of the rings fans who aren't just like based you know assholes upset that that there's a black elf. Most most of the Tolkienites don't care about that. They care that like the the character didn't feel like it didn't feel like Galadriel. Didn't feel like s- some of the characters. Um, and Which to my devil's was, advocate, someone could change a lot over five thousand years. That's true. That is true. Um, and I did try to watch it with that in mind that like, oh, okay, this could be the precursor character um, to like for Galadriel specifically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought it was a weird decision that the show was made in general when they didn't have the rights to all the, all the stuff. I still think for what it was, they did a good job. Um, and I still enjoyed myself watching it, which at the end of the day is like, that's all that matters. Right. So I guess to devil's advocate myself, I still watched the whole thing and I had like, I wasn't mortally offended by anything in it. Yeah. Um, it just felt like it was kind of missing some heart to me, but I really liked the end. Like that reveal at the end. Stranger was Things cool. was this year, the season thing I think was. That was okay. I think it was a return to form. I think, I think this. I think there was like I think there's like three or four storyline branches, and like I only really like two of them are really fucking good. And the other two are like, why are we do, like yeah. spending the time here? Dude, I liked how fucking scary Stranger Things got. Yeah, it I got do, back to that. I do think how they split the season in half and then just had two long episodes. I felt the two long episodes for the second half of the season were unneeded. I felt like they could have just made a slightly longer season. I mm-hmm. didn't like how they split that up, but I really enjoyed the storyline of that. Yep. And I loved Vecna, like real scary shit, yo. But not that I was scared because I am never scared of anything speaking of uh of based as you brought that up um the terminal list was kind of a fun fun show i watched the it's first like a, couple episodes it's obviously very like almost kind of right leaning <laughs> in a sense but it's like got good action it's it's like very dearly handled by like navy seals the author was a navy seal so it's like kind of like pretty almost one-to-one to break in the illusion of movie making and kind of prioritizing realism I guess in like the technical stuff. So it's like, that was kind of fun to see. Um, uh, what else was new? That was big. Uh, uh, any good horror. house of the dragon. Got that. Did you watch the new midnight mask guy thing? Whatever that is. Oh no, I had started it, but I didn't end up watching it. Um, yeah. But I did like Midnight Mass, but that was last year. Severance uh, was supposed to be really good. 1899 was weak. Don't, I think I might have said that on this podcast. Don't waste your time with 1899. I didn't watch Dahmer. People love that. I actually watched the first two episodes of that with my dad, and that was it was, a, it was interesting. I, need the I pe- can see Peacemaker, why Peacemaker, I need to watch that. God. Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan came out. Love that. I felt Obi-Wan. like that felt like the most Star Wars- out of the new Star Wars stuff, if that makes sense. I think I think they're finding their tone now. Yeah. I think they're getting away from the, we just purchased this property, we're going to do our own version of it, and then realizing, no, people want Star Wars, not your version of Star Wars Disney. Yeah. And so I think that, to me, that was a good... I mean, Mandalorian's fucking sick, but that's also because it was handled by the same people who are leading the new vibe of Star Wars now. Yeah. And uh, I really liked it. I Obi-Wan thought it felt was like a good, hype. Yeah. I, d- I do kind of agree with the people who said it could have just been a movie... Um, yeah, I I think that it could have been, but I still oh, it was so cool seeing Hayden Christensen Hayden Christensen come back. He did a great job. I mean, I agree with that it. even more because I think I, I said it many times before, but I think Star Wars is a, is best for a movie format. Mm-hmm. I think the TV shows, as good as they are, because I fucking love them. Uh, 
I don't know. I just, I, I just, I just, it's a movie. It's a movie property. For it me. is a movie property. And I am also, I, this is kind of a hot take, but I like, and I'm aware it's a hot take and I'm probably in the minority, but I'm one of those basic bitches who just wants the space magic and lightsabers. I don't really care that much about, even though I really liked Rogue One and I've seen the first episode of Andor and I can see how like, you're going to love it. You're going to yeah. love Andor. Um, I'm glad that those Star Wars movies and property exist, but I can admit that I'm one of the people who just want space magic and lightsabers. That's all I care about. So yeah. I was happy in that regard that we got Obi-Wan and specifically that Obi-Wan, just like in The Last Jedi, had stepped away from his space magic. So we get to see him kind of relearn it, which is mm. like the coolest shit ever. Love, love a fallen hero. Just, I love a fallen hero. Way more interesting. I want to see him climb. I don't want to see him at the peak of his power. No, I want to see him at the bottom and climb back. That's the shit I love. Give me more of that. So, movies. Movies. My uh, top rated movie, and maybe this uh, that, this probably needs a little bit of a revision, just based on how like things sit with me, mm -hmm. but as what I have it marked, my top movie of the year was Turning Red, which is interesting because it was a very controversial movie for a lot of people who were, didn't like or understand things in it, but I think it's a very mature Turning uh, red. Is it's that like, about the girl? With yeah, the that panda? turns. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I think it was a very like honest story. Like I think people like complain, oh, it's got an agenda and blah blah blah, and get woke, get woke, go broke. But it's like, no, this is a good ver like this is the best version of like going into these like not even taboos to a degree, but I don't know, like like pu themes. like like puberty for girls, you know, which yeah. is ridiculous that that is considered woke. Mm -hmm. That a, a story about a, a Chinese family living in Canada and their daughters going through puberty is a, is is woke or something or you know what I mean and yeah. that people take and like a lot of a lot of conservative parents had issues with that and it was it's just a weird thing anyways despite that I think it's so good at taking the topics on that it does and the the reason that people brought it down it just shows that people are fucking idiots really well I think I think it's a good movie and I think it takes a lot of topics and things that aren't talked about a lot in media really well. I think what, I haven't seen it, so tell me if I'm wrong, but I think what makes this not a woke movie is that it's talking about these themes with the hopes of actually educating, yeah. not not wagging your finger. To me, woke is comes with a, a vibe of wagging your yeah. finger at the audience, like, you're bad. Um, yeah. whoever and they're to be, talking to. To be clear, I don't think this movie's woke. I'm just yeah. how other people have yeah, labeled you it. Yeah, you gave that a crap. But that's what I like about it because these are important things, especially if you guys are pat through puberty, um, you remember how fucking horrific puberty can be, especially for, even though I'm a guy, I think we can objectively say it is infinitely worse for girls. So yeah. I think that that having a movie with the, the, the vibe of like, we're going to discuss these issues, not like in a way that we're wagging our finger at the audience. I think that from what I heard about the movie. It wasn't speaking down at yeah, any point. Yeah, exactly. It was, I think it was, that's it was cute. fully integrated in the, I don't know, like it just, like Disney has a pretty bad track record of like the same sex kind of breakthroughs where there's a queer couple and all they do is like kiss in the background. Yeah. So this, you, and you, again, this isn't, it sh this stuff shouldn't have been taboo is yeah. the other frustrating part. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then not to say the same sex stuff is taboo. I'm just speaking to like, what like these these breakthroughs in these these blockbuster movies you know it's you you can to the, feel to the main audience you can feel the intent when they're doing it to be like look at how woke and inclusive we are versus when they're actually telling a, a meaningful yeah representation or story um and people I, I, can sniff out the bullshit <laughs> and i take that back uh turning red was tied for me for my top film uh with the batman oh, with i the fucking bat love the batman the batman i like I really liked uh, the second D Dark Knight trilogy. Whatever, everyone loved that one. Mm. But I actually liked I even I like the one with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer being Catwoman. Okay, I, li I like yeah. Batman movies. Oh yeah. With that yeah. said, the, then they had stiff competition. But I really liked the Batman. Mm -hmm. I I just love the pacing of it. I love the detective nature of it. It just to me, as a not hardcore fan, but someone who's starting to understand why he's popular and what his origins are. He's a detective felt fucking awesome like that's like everyone has their own version of batman which is cool and he can he can take on so many different forms or so many different ways you can tell a batman story but to me through all that 
I think he's most interesting when he's a detective. Yeah. And so I really like the methodical coming in the room, talking with Commissioner Gordon, leaving, where I think the Christopher Nolan one's way more action movie, which is funny in hindsight because he's like an artor. And then all the other ones Dude. are kind of like, they're fun, but they don't, I don't know, they're not super solid. They're just fun, like 80s, 90s movies. But this felt like the Batman what, to me. Uh, yeah, what I love about this movie in retrospect, having seen it twice now, um, I loved, I th- I get what you mean about the Nolan films feeling more action-y because even though Batman was still up against the mafia and stuff in the Nolan films, Batman as a character felt like this titanic, powerful figure in the Batman, you really feel like he's going up against like these titans, like the Penguins yeah. uh, crime syndicate. Like it really feels like he's fighting a feudal battle um, against the corruption of Gotham City. I think that's also catered to the cinematography. It's always raining, which in retrospect, another thing I read is they wanted it to be raining the whole time in the movie to feel oppressed by the, yeah. the corruption in Gotham, and it totally adds to the well, feel the, of the, like the like water comes through too, which I'm sure ties into that. Yeah, that like is there's it, this Im- imminent flood. You know, it's yeah. almost like a, ooh, look at that. We love biblical references. It's almost like a Noah's Ark type thing. Um, but no, it definitely the Batman felt like. Okay, Robert Pattinson is really up against like the entire city. It just felt more like an impossible bat. Hey, going back to me, I love to see heroes climb. I want to see them climb. I don't want them to have an easy fight. Yeah, give them a battle. Yeah, I loved it, and I think it it did the the iconic villain thing really well, but not yeah. in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it integrated kind of modern incel people using the internet for stuff really well. Mm-hmm. In terms of like a storytelling technique and element, I, uh, I love the look, the music. You know, I the Nirvana song playing on loop didn't bother me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think I, that I, very I'll, intentional with that Nirvana song yeah. too. Talk about like angst and grunge yeah. and the incel. You know, Robert Pattinson. I really like him as an actor. Like, I think the more he distanced himself from the Twilight movies, you know, I think people realize oh he's a good actor he's very different like Mm -hmm. he's got a like a good unconventional like handsome look too which is nice yeah he does Um, he's got a sharp face yeah Yeah. and then april of this year was a banger of a month in terms of good movies we had the northman everything everywhere all at once and then the unbearable weight of massive talent and all movies i loved our favorite morbius yeah also morbius was that month uh i give that a star and a half (laughs) that movie is trash and like I don't want to like trash on people who like things or like if you like good on you if you like it, but like it's objectively not great and devoid of heart. It's not like it's all, it's honestly not offensive that movie. It's just it, it, the movie itself isn't offensive, but it's offensively bland, boring, dated. Uh, it's just it is completely just, devoid of heart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like other things that were pretty solid. Nope. I really enjoyed Nope. Loved Nope. Uh, Prey. Prey was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, X. Really liked X. Yep. And I loved was, it too. Uh, I don't know if I watched the follow up or the prequel one. Which came out in the same year, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I need to. That's wild. I, I was like, I love that. I love that they're starting like an ex- a cinematic universe with new stuff. Of slasher. That, of that, slasher yeah, with film. slasher too. That isn't like, obviously, horror is super popular, so it's not like super you know, underdog story, but at least something new, a new IP kind of cinematic universe that isn't like superhero or sci-fi or fantasy. In a different way, they kind of reinvented the slasher in a fun way. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, uh, it's a German remake of that. It's the third essentially movie remake of of that book. And, you know, if war films are for everyone, but if you like wanna like diversify your genre, viewing if you have to pick a war movie it's a tough watch in terms of like it's but that's also why it's so good is it's a really good anti-war film and a historical film mm. it's like i mean it's, it's it's a fictional but it it evokes a lot of things and i i really recommend it we i did that with a podcast with patrick and patrick's like fucking john making me watch this war movie and he watched it and, we, and he's like it was he loved it it was mm. solid um it makes you feel a lot of things uh glass onion I haven't seen that yet, oh, but I, I really want to. I love Knives Out, so and then, good follow up to Knives Out. Yeah, nice. And oh yeah, very good. And then uh, Guillermo 
Del Toro's Pinocchio. Oh, yeah, you said that was good, right? Yeah, watch it for that, sure. Oh, that's interesting. It's really good. It's got a lot of heart. It's it's a Marvel, uh, technically speaking, and yeah. Nice. And then also uh, Avatar. I haven't seen it. We're actually seeing that tonight, but you did have yes. seen it already. I've seen Avatar. Really enjoyed it. Uh, Spoiler-free review. It's a it's a fun action movie. Go see it with the fam. It's uh it's got something for everybody. I think I thought it was fun, um, My, and it's I mean it's a visual masterpiece. So oh, I gave it three and a half stars, but I, it was a highlight movie for me though. Was Top Gun Maverick? I fucking mm-hmm. love that movie. Like that should actually I, like personally speaking, I think that should be maybe a four star for me. But I love that movie. That was that was fun. Like Tom, that that brings you back to why we love the movies and going to the theater over the summer. You yeah. know. I love that movie. Yeah, that's that's what Avatar did for me. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully it does the same. Well, we're for going you. to Alamo you and watching it with 3D. No, I, so I, I think it's it's a very low like like Joey Joey liked it, and I'm more of an you, apologist than Joey, so yeah, I, I will like it. Yeah, you'll like it. You'll like but it. But my other, I'm excited to see it in 3D. Kind of finishing up movies. Uh, Fantastic Beats, Beats, the Fantastic Beats, Fantastic Beats, right here, dude. Uh, the Secrets of Dumbledore, uh, star and a half, trash movie. Oh, I bet it was. Yeah. And Thor, Lund- we Lund- already know the Secrets of Dumbledore. Yeah, Thor also came out this year. I think missed the mark. I think they doubled down on the thing, like they doubled down on the things that people liked from Love and Thunder, but just went too far. Mm-hmm. Like the goof, goofification of Thor, is just like he's a joke. Um, it does do some things well, though. Yeah. Did you but see it? We got a really good representation of Thor in God of War, so yeah, it, we true. made up for it in the media. But uh, any other movies or anything we don't hit here? Chip and Dale, Risky Rangers, really good. Watch that if you like Roger Rabbit uh, or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Go watch that. That's really good. My one of my favorite movies I saw this year. Well, I can't remember them all, so this might not be my favorite. But one of my favorites. It's a little too late, but Violent Night. With David Arbor. It was great. What a fun Christmas movie. I know it's after the holidays, but that was a really fun one. I loved it. Definitely going to be a new tradition holiday watch for me. I need so, to watch that. Yeah. It's like a, it's like Krampus the, and Die Hard mix. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. yeah, it very much. It, it like there, there's a Die Hard reference in the movie and it's very, yeah, it, it is like Krampus and Die Hard. It's great. Okay. It's super fun. I need to watch it. Um, but yeah. Um, 2023 what it what things are we excited for like game media, wise uh, movie wise in 2023 oh uh i think oh. my head's been in the trenches so much that like i, I don't know too much I, I, I don't know do you have something I'm, I'll, I'll uh, well first of all atomic heart i'm genuinely yeah. very excited for that because you guys know i'm a bioshock slut i'm gonna call <laughs> myself i'm a bioshock slut um there's another game coming out that is from Ken, Ken Levine. And oh, yeah, that looks... Th- okay. it, it basically is the new Bioshock. I forget what it's called, but I think that's coming out this year as well. Um, in terms of movies, uh, is there anything... There's a new Creed, new John Wick. New Creed, new Wick. He's the Wick. Dude, I'm oh, a little I'm looking John for the Dungeons and Dragons movie. I'm a little wicked out, dude. I think, I think my the, Wick is at its end. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the first one is good film good film second one is okay that's fun turn it up to 11 and i think the third one it gets uh it's just still at 11 it's like it's at 11 like teetering like maybe going to 12 like yeah but it's like not going to 12 because it's becoming that much more bastard or better it's just like it's i don't know i think it's like officially starting to break yeah it they because it felt like two that's how you ramp it up but then with three and i still like enjoyed three but it felt like it was just a continuation of two not its own new addition um but i'll still go see it because we all love keanu we stand keanu here at jt (laughs) music studios looking Uh, forward to the dungeons and dragons movie uh that looks fun it looks just looks like a fun time the mario movie actually looks like it'll be fun Mario movie, dude. I've been proven wrong. I was a hater at first. I was, I was just like you guys because there were a lot of haters out there. Not saying you guys are haters, but I was one of the haters. The new trailers have flipped me over. But I think that everybody kind of went that way. So I'm just, I'm, I'm with the mainstream on this. The Guardians um, finale. Uh, that'll be interesting because I think they're gonna. Pro- they got. It's got to be pretty final because I think they're gonna be killing some people off, or some people characters will be sunsetting. You know. Yeah. That'll be fun. Fast ten. That will wrap Jesus up. Jesus, FX. Is it really going to wrap up? Um, probably not. 
Probably not. Indiana Jones. I did the new Evil Dead looks really good. I'm too. looking forward to the the Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan always brings it. Yep. I think that's that was 2021, but I actually really like Tenet. And like Tenet I was, like I don't uh, like the stuffy uh, our tour our tour stuff, but I like that. Dune. Dune. Dune two. Hunger Games. Oh, we're getting a, a Hunger new Games movie. Hungry, uh, Hungry Games. Ah, okay. It's it follows Cornelius Snow, who's the like president in the in the. Oh, movie. maybe it's his origin story. That might be kind of yeah. That should be that interesting. Might be kind of lit. Um, yeah, we, that's the movies coming out. Uh, looks like a decent one. Nothing. I think inevitably, like the under the radar, kind of like low budget but like well made movies like Barbarian or X will be the ones I still remember most from 2023 mm-hmm. or like hypothetically because those were, are the ones I, that sit with me the most for 2022 was like everywhere all at once Barbarian and X yeah they aren't the best movies I saw but they like they reinvented they, things yeah and I really like those and they felt very yeah they stood out in feeling unique or that they were taking an already established like trope and reinventing the wheel those three were incredible movies yeah really like those um and then we transition i mean do you have any uh also just be- like me best memory of the year was like mpc yeah like that was such a release of emotions and ex- like hard work and um just gr- really gratifying professionally but also fun just to hang out with you guys the fans and and with all the fellow artists it's yeah. just it's very gratifying i'm looking forward to 2020 three um yeah in raleigh in our own backyard and it's gonna be fun to kind of bring people in our neck of the woods hopefully show them a good time show you everyone that comes a good time again the tickets are on sale uh, they're still vip if you really like not to just go into pedal like merch pedaling mode even though it's tickets but get the vip if you're interested uh yeah every year the event goes on the vip is going to be harder to match in terms of the experience and the face-to-face mm-hmm. but the vips this year get like their own party uh, Friday night, most of the talent will be there. It's in a museum. You can just mm-hmm. kind of go and play with all the exhibits or hang out on the dance floor, um, listen to music, meet and greet, whatever. Yeah, VIP you have gets a, a real sick experience yeah. this year. <laughs> and then you still have the actual meet and greet on Sunday and then yeah. the whole show Saturday. So it's a, uh, if you can afford it, um, now is the time always, but we're, we're going to keep doing them. But it's mm-hmm. like now is the time. Like the only, will, if it gets bigger, mm-hmm. you know, that, that kind of stuff might vanish. Exactly. Take his word for it. All the hard work this guy's putting into it's uh, this year will probably be possibly if it continues the best year for VIPs. Yeah. So and yeah. we always <laughs> want like the meet the meet and greet and the attainability to be a goal of NPC. Yeah. I just, a, it's hard to say what it'll look like, but I know this year it looks really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Better than last year, too. Uh, anything year wrap up future? Um, not a whole lot. I'm super excited about this year. Yeah. Going to be some great, great content that we're going to be making and just, yeah, can't wait. It's going to be good. Stick around. Well, we, um, transition into cars. Um, talking about cars. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, only because it's kind of in the tech kind of thing. Uh, people like cars. We're not gearheads by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I do aesthetically like cars, um, but I'm, I don't like no. I don't follow the specs of like a motor or yeah, shit like either. that. But I, like, I'm, I guess it's more of like the creative brain side of me is like really appreciating certain looks of cars, like I don't know Jeeps, and Land Rovers. I love the like hard angle, like the boxy but like smooth angles on them. Don't like mm-hmm. current Jeep stuff. Current Jeep sucks, but like the old Cherokees, just awesome. Old Land Rovers, awesome. Forerunners always been looking good. <laughs> Japanese are they know how to model that car um but why I bring it up is I uh, have been driving a Tesla for four years and I kind of wanted to share what might some people might be curious like what it was like to do that what was good what was bad and the reason I, I upgraded to a Rivian uh, which is another EV but yeah we can talk some about that you have an Audi there's uh, some experiences there. Love my Audi. Um, it is definitely, it's starting to show some of its finickiness. Yep, that's the, the um, Germans for you. Yep, that is German engineering, but the car does handle extremely well. It was also like one of the, because as, as John and I started to make more money on YouTube, we were 
especially because John, the business mind, was always very proactive about getting our retirement set up and say, and I've always been financially responsible. I've certainly never been the kind of person to like blow my money. You know, I'm not one of those two I mean, lords who makes you're money. You're way more fiscally responsible than me. Well, I, I, for whatever, whatever for, you're setting up. But no, I was just going to say like this, the Audi I drive was one of my first like big, like kind of, Hey, let's, we, we have the, we have the luxury to be able to splurge on ourselves. So let's do it. And even the finickiness that I'm starting to deal with it, uh, having some steering alignment issues, it, point I was going to make is that is one of the greatest purchases I've ever made. I have absolutely loved that car. I can't, if you ever are in a position where you're lucky enough to be able to be able to consider yourself about to buy an Audi. I have absolutely loved driving that car. Um, but again, just starting to get some of the some of the technical issues that come with yeah. that German engineering. But I'll 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 stick with it for a while. I'll let you guys know if I switch over. But um, I know you you loved your Tesla. I loved yeah. riding in it, and I drove it a couple yeah, times. So I got but, a Model Three in 2018. So pretty early adopter. Um, yeah. And. I was in a bad relationship with someone who thought they were dumb. And as soon as that relationship was over, I was like, fuck you. And uh, I pre-ordered it. It was a marriage. So it, was, it wasn't like, there's a whole lot of baggage there. We'll have a, we'll have a podcast about that kind of stuff. Relationships but podcast. That'll be anyways, a good one. I got it as soon as I could, which was early. So I've had it. I had, I've had one, one of the first ones on the road, which is actually kind of cool. In, in the, and in and back when it was cool to like Elon, because yeah. things have think yeah. Anyways, <laughs> but it, it's, it was one of the first ones on the road, which is more interesting because it just happened to have really good build quality. Because the Model Threes and Ys had really spotty build quality from like 2020, 2021, but the twenty eighteens were actually really solid builds. So I actually mm. never had any issues with mine. No, no quality issues, no fitment issues. It was a solid car. That's nice. Um, but it was just fun. It was a, uh, you know the. It was early enough in 2018 where the amenities, the lack of amenities in the car was like, whatever. Like, this is a sick piece of technology. Like, the gimmick of, like, only having the screen there and no dials, no buttons. Like, yeah. Like, this is the future. Yeah. But as I had used it more and more and more, and, like, it's not a secret, but it's like, this is just cost-cutting shit. Mm. Like, this, is, this isn't, like, a conscious decision to be the future or... And the minimalist thing isn't like, we're Tesla, we're minimalist. It was a cost cutting thing. Like the Model 3 and Ys are just, they're, they're, they're very good cars. Like, don't get me wrong, but mm. those little quirks are just cost cutting features to get a car to the masses, which, you know, the mission is fine. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to say they're, they're being, um, they're being cheap, I guess. But with that said, having like a primary driver that just doesn't have basic things kind of got kind of got tiring and annoying like it just didn't have things that like every like i guess despite it trying to be affordable you you are paying for a luxury car and it doesn't feel like a luxury car the battery the electric technology top notch very mm -hmm. cool but like the driving the comfort the per, like the experience of the consumer is uh is pretty bare and mm. like you know playing the witcher while you're charging is cool like that's very high tech whatever yeah but you're, kind of you're spending 99% of your time driving. So it yeah. doesn't matter how many cool gimmicks and entertainment options that thing has, that the, the, the screen, it just doesn't matter. It's the driving, you're driving it. And the self-driving was good. It was like chill to be on the road and kind of, even if like you're taking back 20% of your attention, it like, it, it calms you down 20% that much more. Like I still paid attention. I had my hands on the wheel. Still, there's people who put ankle weights on the t on the wheels so yeah. that there's like it thinks that someone's holding it. But again, it just made driving that pl pleasant. Charging was a pleasant break. It added time to your drive. You know, it's probably an extra three. It's probably an extra forty minutes for every three hours you're driving. If that makes sense. So if you're driving, I don't know. If you're driving three hours, and it takes you three hours to get somewhere, add on forty minutes of charging halfway through, or at the end, or at the beginning, mm. and uh. In the end, the I didn't have to experience a lot of charging stuff because I would just charge it at home, and it was a city driver. So I was able, it kind of, minus the car payment, it felt like I was driving for free, which was fun. And, like, whatever my electrical bill charge was unnoticeable. So it did, like, I do keep an uh, a, a gas car for long distance or just that kind of flexibility. But, like, 
when I drive the EV, the Tesla, it felt like I was driving for free, which is kind of cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, again, my biggest qualm with it, and it's like kind of a weird one, again, is that it doesn't feel luxurious mm. for what you're paying. And especially for people that have like quality issues or fitment issues from the factory, like it not being well built or having to take it back because the steering wheel wasn't installed tight. So it was all loose, like all that shit. Um, that's, I think, the biggest knock on Tesla. That's interesting because one, I've kind of become disillusioned with Elon recently, as, as we've talked about before and as a lot of people have with how he presents himself on Twitter. There have been a lot of like video essays that have come out over the past couple years that I'm a little late to the party seeing because we've we've talked about Elon a little bit on this podcast before how, you know, in the early days, 2017, when we made that goofy music video yeah. about him, we were definitely your quintessential millennials. I, I would never call us Elon bros or whatever they call him, but we definitely liked what he was doing because it seemed like this is a guy who just cares about furthering the human race. But there's been a lot of stuff. I don't know how much you've seen that's come out that essentially and again i know i might be late to the party on this and this is all still kind of early stuff that i'm being early like discovering um is that elon presents himself as this like futurist dude to like it's a business tactic yeah and there's a lot of practices like with tesla like the proprietary chargers there's a lot of things that help you see through the cracks that like oh he really is a businessman first not not a futurist like he presents himself to be yeah. which makes me if that's all true makes me, me feel kind of duped for like having been well, a I mean, huge supporter of elon and again this is i'm not like writing him off immediately or it, immediately believing all these things i've seen it's just kind of opened my perspective to like oh is this is like great of a guy as i see him beyond his like shittiness on twitter and how he presents himself it's this i, mean, I definitely don't think he's altruistic like He's doing the things because he has the money to do them and he yeah. has the imagination. But and I think they have made a change. Like everyone's moving EV. Like the like there's like 15 or 20 countries that their adoption rate is at 5% or more, which mm -hmm. is the turning point where it just starts going where more and more people are buying electric and the US hit that this year. Mm. And so, and so he, you have four everyone's making electric cars. So like even if the the uh, the effect is there you know yeah i guess then. the effect is there for me it's more so just like where is his motive coming from what is his intention cuz if i guess I would just, and I know you would too, I would lose a lot of respect because I have always pictured Elon as a person who, no matter what he says, at his core, I believed he genuinely cared about furthering the human race yeah. and prolonging us as a star interstellar species. I thought at his core, that's what he cares the most about, which I consider to be a pretty on honorable thing, but I'm kind of seeing more evidence that is showing that at his core, he only cares about money and, 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 and becoming like a big name, well, yeah, like think, a big celebrity. I think his so. ego. I, and his again, ego I know that's old news to some people, but his ego has grown tenfold and like the motiva yeah. motivating factors of whatever dopamine dumps he gets from that have yeah. been huge, like drivers for him. And has mm -hmm. put him in a lot of shitty positions and I think has exposed a lot of his shittiness. I think he's always mm -hmm. been a cutthroat businessman his yeah. whole life. And I think... Yeah, he did some I'm shady making, shit to his I'm friend. Not, yeah, I'm not PayPal. making excuses for it. I'm just saying he's always been this guy. So there's like, there's nothing... Like, what he's doing at Twitter isn't Elon gone bad. Like, he's yeah. always been that guy. And it's just now more visible to a lot of people. Gotcha. So that's, that, that, that I think. Sense. So again, like this video essay isn't like digging up dirt necessarily. It's just... I mean, guess it is. It's digging up dirt. It's just not. It's only. It's. It's like it's a new revelation to the to the the wider thing. But gotcha. like, I mean, I read his autobiography like I think four years. I think I like listened to it on audiobook in my Tesla because I felt cool. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, even though it's kind of his semi endorsed one, you you pick up like he's a cutthroat guy. Like he's a businessman. Like yeah, and he'll he'll do the shitty things because to to, cut, to save money or to to push people beyond their limit to crunch. You know, it's. Yeah, which is like there's that's how innovation is done sometimes. It's just it can be a shitty way of doing it, which yeah. I guess is where the whole debate around Elon comes from. Yeah. So polarizing. But. He's uh he, he he's like Trump in the sense of like shut the fuck up. Yeah, oh, for sure. And you like would the stuff be he fine. says. Again, not a, not a pro Trumper remotely, but Trump Trump is a piece of shit. Yeah. But if he just shut up, he would just be that like he that would, little Yeah little less piece of a shit i mean he always is but the perception and the the, the impact i guess the influence on the, the you know the mm. people who are problematic yeah um but i think 
like would I recommend a Tesla, you know, uh, mm. to kind of bring it around. And I, 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 re- I would recommend electric vehicles to uh, someone who knows they're never leaving their city or suburban area. Mm. I recommend it to you. If, if that's your case, then like perfect, awesome, easy to use. Go home and charge it and it's f- full ready. You could go for the next day to do whatever you need to do in the city. Um, if you have the disposal income for two cars, I would only recommend, or if any, and you do a lot of driving and like you need that quick responsiveness, I would only recommend getting an EV if you can afford two cars. Mm. And I think that can also apply though to a lot of families because a lot of families have two cars. If you're a family and you have two cars, I think you can, I think the pricing is low enough on them where they're just the same as any other car where if you're getting a new car, I would recommend it. I would, and, but there's better options or other options than Tesla. Now you have the VW ones, um, the IDQ or something. I think it's called. There's the, there's Kia and Hyundai have them now. Out of e-tron, that's only like two hundred thousand. You can go with that too for your that's, second family that's car. That's like yeah, for your second family. <laughs> but I, I like I think there's a, I think there's a good place in twenty twenty three for families who have two cars who are looking to buy a new car. I think it is. I think there is a good place to buy an electric. Yeah. Because it's just, it's just easy. Uh, it's good, you know, for the environment or whatever. Like, whatever impact that does have, I think it's a good movement. You're moving towards the future. Yeah. Um, it's easy, sustainable, um, and uh, you know the, a lot of these cars have good perks in terms of uh, you know just com- creature comforts and technology. Uh, a lot of them are designed pretty forward thinking with like having kids in the car and making life easier there. Entertainment options like doors that are easy to go in and out with like you know a uh, baby carriage thingy, whatever it's called, the carrier. Um, and also, you get any if you get any of the new ones that are there hasn't been like there's a certain limit like when there's been like 250,000 of them made then the tax sort of goes away but if you buy one you save $7,500 on your tax you get a tax credit so that's kind of cool too there's there's gas savings you know like a full supercharge is like half of what I pay to fill up my my gas car damn and that's a big one again what I see at home when I charge I don't notice it and you can also turn it off during peak hours you're only charging it during like when the electricity isn't being strained. Mm. Um, yeah. So would I recommend Tesla? It's a good option. I think it's a really good option. The proprietariness is annoying, but there is so much Tesla has been ahead of the game for so long that the resources and everything is out there, but mm. everyone else, you know, is using this a standard is standardizing, which is really nice. And I think better for the growth of EVs at large. Yeah. And so I put, um, I put some more money into EV stocks. Nice. That's my 20, 20- 23 investment advice i guess yep yeah i need um, uh my stocks are in the in the garbage yeah you know? mine are still it's, too, i'm so de- like like it's it's such a stupid thing because i was buying on the rise and when it was low um but i didn't i didn't cash out or average down or whatever i don't even know the expressions exactly but like so it's, i'm just riding the wave down yeah so i'm just losing the money i had gained and it's just too depressing it's like well i should invest while it's low yeah, but I I've just, put a little bit more in just because thing I think everything is pretty low right now, but it yeah. is it does kind of hurt to do that because yeah. it's it could still be trending low. Stocks are tough, dude. Stocks yeah. are tough, but you know what I've I've officially decided I think is get here to stick around is crypto. Um, mm. Not that I'm I'm not a crypto bro. I am not doing that. Actually, that's a whole rabbit hole I could go down with this whole Logan Paul crypto zoo influencer crypto scams in general are to me is some of the most heinous, disgusting shit that people can do out there. So I'm not about to peddle JT coin. Well, I don't know um, how people. This is just like fraudsters and scammers in general, but I don't know how people can consciously morally do that. It's obviously, evil. So obviously, some it's people evil. don't have that, so they can do it. But then on the flip side, which maybe I think everyone can feel this, unless they're like a psychopath or a sociopath, is like the, the being worried of the ramifications. 
Yeah. Or the well, consequence. And that, it's like, I guess that's just entitlement or. That's kind of what I've learned about all this crypto scam stuff is that it is easier for them to do it and get away with it because there isn't a lot of regulation with crypto stuff. Yeah. It's like they can basically get off scot free by saying, oh, that wasn't me. I wasn't involved in that. That was this other guy I was working with. There's a lot of finger pointing with mm -hmm. these influencer crypto scams. And they can, you can make as many different crypto wallets as you want. So the money trail is really hard to follow. So it's like, it is super fucking evil shit. It's like, th this is kind of a hot take, but I like almost equate it. Almost. This is very, very hot take. Almost equate it to the YouTubers who sexually harass their fans for like photos and stuff who have done that. It's using your image to well, essentially seduce your fans into throwing money. I mean, both things are exploitive. It, I think, both, I think yeah, they both that's hit exploitive. That, they both hit that arc of yeah, exploitation. Of, ex of exploiting your fans. And that is fucking the most evil thing you can do. It, it makes me blood red mad seeing these dudes just steal millions of dollars from their fans. It is... In insane but uh anyways that being said all that shit aside i do think i've finally kind of been convinced that i think crypto at least the you know bitcoin and like ethereum and a few of the other ones are here to yeah, stay the concept so. of it i think is gonna stay I, I think it was just a bubble like it was just like a yeah. get rich kind of I don't know. It's such, I don't it's such a weird bubble. It it's, is it's a, a weird, weird thing. bubble. And it's gonna, but it's going to hit it again. But I think, no, I think it definitely will. And I also, the way I've finally kind of started to see it is like, oh, this could be a future of currency that is universal and not just like different forms of it. Like, imagine if we had like a universal currency. I, I feel like maybe that might be where it's going. It also helps. I don't know if I told you this, but the investment app I use, Fidelity, which is a very good one, or so I've been told, is now just starting their own way to buy crypto because you couldn't buy crypto through yeah. Fidelity. So that to me further showed that like, oh, if this investment company I'm with it believes in the future of crypto, that's just a further yeah, good I sign. Think, I think these um, like, shitheads exploiting get rich quick schemes yeah uh and it's always with crypto doesn't mean it's because crypto is shitty or like inherently unwise or bad i think it's all like any reason why people might be unwise or bad is the growth or the like the volatility of it is because of the exploitation and the yeah. opportunisticness and whatever that reflects with these these shitheads. Exactly. And that I, that's a good way to put it. It reflects also it. not an expert on crypto. Just yeah. anecdotal. Oh, neither am I. I'm not trying to say I I don't know how I brought it up, but oh, because we we're talking about stocks and investments. Yeah. I think I just this year I might and I'm not gonna put a lot into crypto, but I might actually start putting a little bit. I'm gonna do my research too, obviously. But it is it's interesting because we do at, right now it's almost like it's almost uh, controversial to just say the word crypto, you know? Well, it's it's like so many, it was so funny, like about a year ago or earlier this year or last year, whatever, but um, how much celebrities were endorsing it and how yeah. many celebrities had their own crypto companies and now they're dead silent about it. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's that's the other thing. It's like- That, I, that was also exploitive too. It's like a rich get richer with these assholes. That, they were all doing it. Yeah. So like, yeah, the, the, again, my point is I finally see- the um relevance of like bitcoin and ethereum specifically like not with all these other shit coins that keep popping up or celebrities promoting like i see at its core the big ones like okay i think this might actually be a thing and again i'm not a crypto bro but it's just it's interesting it's really interesting to watch just the development of all things really i mean yeah. we kind of talked about it at the beginning of this podcast the development of youtube and the algorithm and how we're gonna try to adapt and grow with yeah. it um same to watch the changes with currency it's like what cersei lannister says in the game of thrones you live and die by the game <laughs> Something like that. She's that's the quote. In the Game of Thrones, you live and die by the game. Just redo Game of Thrones, same cast, same like shot for shot remake, but Cersei's just me. <laughs> just you, yeah. In the Game of Thrones, you play the game and die. Uh, yeah. I love when uh they, they, during the Oscars they make like really good re, like shot for shot remake of scenes when they do like oh, a, the recap. Yeah. I don't know, I don't think they do that anymore, but they used to. I remember those. those Anyways, ones first podcast of 2023 hope you guys enjoyed it uh we'll see you on the next time <laughs> we'll see you on the next time that's our Bye. motto